Hi everyone and welcome to the last part in the object detection series. In this video, I would like to talk a little bit about a trend that is happening right now in deep learning, namely the fusion of different modalities which obviously has been affecting the object detection field as well. And as a study case, we are going to take a look at the grounding Dino model. First of all, I would like to clarify the difference between closed set and opposite object detection. So closed set object detection is what we have been studying in this series so far and it focuses on recognizing objects from a predetermined set of known classes. In contrast, open set object detection not only identifies known objects but also detects and categorizes previously unseen or unknown objects. And we can see in this image taken from the grounding Dino paper that on the left, which is the closed set object detection, we identify only the objects that are found in the MS Coco dataset, such as the bench in the upper image or the persons in the lower one. However, as we increase the text understanding of our model, we are able to identify novel categories such as lions or even the World Cup. Finally, the latest stage of open set object detection is when we want to identify very specific object in the image, such as the left line or the button man with the heads up. And we can do all sorts of interesting things if we have this functionality, like replacing a certain object in the image with something else using stable diffusion, like the example in the upper right where the left line has been replaced with a dog. Okay, so now that we have covered that up, Let's dig into the grounding Dino architecture. The first thing we can do is to feed the model an image and the corresponding test query that describes what we want to find. Then, grounding Dino uses a text backbone like BERT to extract the textual features and an image backbone like Swin Transformer to extract the corresponding visual features. Those two features are then fed into a feature enhancer for cross-modality feature fusion, which basically combines the two features by using the self-attention mechanism in two steps. Image to text cross-attention, where we see that we have the input query Q coming from the visual features and the keys K and the values V coming from the textual features. Thus, the model learns to combine the two modalities by firstly looking at which parts of the textual input are relevant for a specific visual feature. Then, we have the text to image cross attention layer where the model does the opposite and learns what parts of the image are important for a specific textual query using the attention mechanism. Finally, we have a feed forward layer that creates the output of the model and some self attention mechanisms for both the textual and the visual features at the beginning to increase the expressivity of the model. The next important module is the language guided query selection whose role is to select the visual features that are the most relevant for a given input text query. How it works is depicted here in this algorithm. What we have as input is the text and the image features together with the number of queries we want to select. Then we take the i sum of the image and of the textual features across the last dimension resulting in a matrix that has i rows and t columns and then select the key highest values in this matrix across the image features dimension. The last important component of the grounding Dino model is the cross-modality decoder, whose role is to select the relevant features from both the image and the textual input. It achieves that by using yet another cross-attention layer and by attending to both the visual and textual features, obtaining an updated cross-modality query. Finally, we compute the loss, which is composed of two parts. The first loss tries to bring the cross-modality queries close to the textual features, creating a strong link between the visual and the textual features. And the second loss is a data-like bounding box regression loss, and it's used to detect the objects of interest in the image. And that's basically it. In a nutshell, we have seen that a lot of fusing layers have been incorporated into the grounding Dino architecture, trying to create a common feature space between images and the textual queries. And that's mainly the key ingredient that allows it to perform so well on open set object detection. Thus, we finish the object detection series. If you have watched all the videos in the series, please let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. And if you haven't, make sure to check the rest of the videos to learn more about object detection. See you next time. Bye bye.